What's going on everyone, Jeremy here from The Quartering, and uh, if you watch your videos on YouTube, this should absolutely terrify you. Uh, you know, I've been a proponent of new tech for a very long time, and I realized that it takes a very, very long time to, you know, compete against the, you know, Google machine, obviously, and, you know, from a feature standpoint, new tech is always years and years and years behind, so it takes a long time. But maybe today, with the day you consider, some new options. As the article I'm about to share with you, Google you, uh, ordered to unmask certain YouTube users simply for watching a video. Simply for watching a video, YouTube has been ordered to unmask its users. Now, many of you are smart, you're anonymously registered, use VPNs, all that kind of stuff. I hear you, I see you, you know. In a just unsealed case from Kentucky reviewed, by, Kentucky, reviewed by Forbes, undercover cops sought to identify the individuals behind the online moniker Elon Musk WHM, who they suspect of selling Bitcoin for cash, potentially running afoul of money laundering laws and rules around unlicensed money transmitting. In conversations with, use, with the user in early January, undercover agents sent links of YouTube tutorials for mapping via drones and augmented reality software, then asked Google for information on who had viewed the videos, which collectively had been watched over 30,000 times. So the FBI set up a honeypot for the user, right? Then told YouTube... Hey, give me all of their information. I want to know everybody, not who uploaded the video, because the feds did that. If you just watched it, you may not have been involved in any kind of scam, involved in any kind of acti illegal activity. Doesn't matter. YouTube, 30,000 people. Got to give your information to the federales. In conversations with the user in early January, or oh, I hit that already, sorry. The court orders show the government telling YouTube to provide the names, addresses, telephone numbers, and user activity for all YouTube accounts who accessed the YouTube videos between January 1st and January 3rd. So dox, they want to dox. They told YouTube to dox 30,000 people just for watching the video. By the way, what if it had been viewed by a million people? This wasn't even like a very specific type of video, you know, for a very specific, you know, um, you know, very specific audience. These are pretty general, you know, that it's insane. Uh, the cops argued, quote, there is a reason to, there's reason to believe that these records would be relevant and material to an ongoing criminal investigation, including by providing identification information about the perpetrators. Quote, no one should fear a knock on the door from police simply because of what the YouTube algorithm serves up. So if you're an anonymous YouTube user, let's say, I don't know, who's to say that they can't tell YouTube to serve you the video just so they have an excuse to dox you? The court granted the order and YouTube was told to keep the request secret until it was unsealed this week. When it was obtained by Forbes, the court records do not show whether or not Google provided the data. Of course they did. Why? Of course they did. In another example involving an investigation in New Hampshire, the Portsmouth police received a threat from an unknown male that something had been you know, done. The order says that after the police searched the area, they learned that they were being watched over a YouTube live stream camera associated with a local business. Federal investigators believe similar events have happened across the United States where you know threats were called in and then people watch what the cops do via YouTube. I mean, okay, I feel like that's a little different because there was a commission of a crime, right? If you're just watching a video, that's not a crime, unless that video's, you know, there's a few things, perhaps. 
They asked Google to provide a list of accounts and or viewed or interacted with eight live streams and associated identifying information during specific timeframes. That included a video posted by Boston and Maine Live, which has 130,000 subscribers. Mike McCormick, who set up the company behind the account, IP Time Lapse, said he knew about the order, adding that they were related to swatting incidents directed at the camera viewers at that time. Again, it's unclear whether or not Google provided that data. Of course they did. With all law enforcement demands, we have a rigorous process designed to protect the privacy and constitutional rights of our users while supporting the important work of law enforcement. Said Google spokesperson Matt Bryant, we examine each demand for legal validity consistent with developing case law and we return, routinely push back against overbroad or otherwise inappropriate demands for user data, including objecting to some demands entirely. The Justice Department has not responded to requests for comment at the time of this publication. Privacy experts said that the orders were unconstitutional because they threatened to undo protections in the First and Fourth Amendment covering free speech and freedom of unreasonable searches. This is the latest chapter in disturbing trend where we see the government agencies increasingly transforming search warrants in, into digital dragnets. It's unconstitutional. It's terrifying, and it's happening every single day. And Albert Fox Khan, executive director at Surveillance Tech Oversight Project. No one should fear a knock on the door from the police simply because of what the YouTube algorithm serves up. I'm horrified that the courts are allowing this. He said the orders were just as chilling as geofence, geofence warrants, where Google had been ordered to provide data on all users just in the vicinity of a crime. Google announced an update in December that it will make it technically impossible for the tech giant to provide information. I think they're getting rid of cookies or something like that. Uh, ruled in the response to geofence orders. Prior to that, a California court had ruled that a geofence warrant covering several densely populated areas in LA was un unconstitutional. <coughs> Excuse me. Leading to hopes the courts would stop police seeking data. Quote, what we watch online can reveal deeply sensitive information about us, our politics, our passions, our religious beliefs, and much more. So John Davison, senior counsel at the Electronic Privacy Information Center. It's fair to expect that law enforcement won't have access to that information without probable cause. The order turns that assumption on its head. Again, by the way, this is for the crime of watching a YouTube video. Now, people say, well, don't you think the NSA already? Uh, probably. If you watch certain YouTube videos, investigators demand your data from Google. This is absolute insanity. You see this. So 30, they, get, they dox 30,000 people for this at, at, uh, thing. Then the other channel had 130,000 subscribers. So let's say, I mean, I don't know if they had to dox all of their subscribers or what the case might be, but it's absolute insanity. It's nuts. Advocates have called on Google to be more transparent about its data sharing policies for years with fears stoked by ongoing open arrests of protesters and creeping statewide criminaliz criminalization of certain things. In December, Google updated its privacy policies to allow users to save their location data directly to the devices rather than the cloud and shorten the retention time for such storage. The new policy also indirectly stunted a long-used investigatory workaround in which law enforcement officials use Google location data to target suspects. Google had been taken to court over such concerns over the past year, including two state Supreme Court cases surrounding constitutionality of the keyword search warrants, which forces sites to turn over an individual's internet search data. I mean, this is, this is terrifying. You know, it just uh, for the crime of watching a YouTube video, for the crime of watching a YouTube video, a YouTube video that is, you know, again, complete uh, about augmented reality and using drones, <clears throat> this is very normal stuff. Now, you know, hypothetically, okay, PD shows up at your house. You're not the person they're looking for. Hypothetically, 
out of those 160,000 people, they were just looking for the scammer and potential the potentially one of the people who was calling in these, you know, swattings or whatever. But in order to get at these one one out of 100, two people out of 160,000, they violated the civil liberties of 159,998 people. I mean, it's not okay. Uh, the fact that, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that Google shared this data. You know, of all the companies, Apple actually is the one most known for uh, protecting their customers. This is a huge, huge story. I mean, there's no way, there's no way I would ever believe a site like Rumble would ever do that uh, or uh, BitChute or Odyssey. This is just insane. Again, you know, including usernames, phone numbers, addresses, and more simply for watching YouTube video. About augmented reality or drones. Now would be a great time to remind you. I stream, by the way, every day at 530 Eastern. I hope you tune in tonight. I have two channels. I have QuarterCast here on YouTube. Um, and also I have my quartering channel on rumble, but if you don't want a platform, that's going to just send your name information, a platform willing to dox you for watching a video, perhaps download the rumble app and follow the quartering or go over to the quartering.com. It'll redirect you to this page and sign up for a rumble account. Follow me there and tune in there tonight. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.